Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. This week we are going to recap Fight to Win Pro 72, UAE King of Mats. We are not going to talk about the IBJJF Brazilian Nationals because we talked about that last week. We're going to talk about Abu Dhabi Pro, which happened in conjunction with King of Mats. It was just, you know, one was before the other one. Yep. We are also going to talk a little bit about the USA team grappling usa grappling team trials there you go that odd event that happened this last weekend or this week and then we are going to preview fight to win pro 73 in chicago illinois a card that should be fantastic as apparently chicago has one of the best crowds in the country for fight to win according to fight to win staff the best pretty much all of them independently said that it was the best so i'm amped for this card it seems like it'll they will put on a show with this one as well as ACBJJ13 in Los Angeles, California, that Josh and Maine forget to cover till the end of the show. Jumping right into news. Holy fuck. We've been watching a lot of jujitsu. That is one way to put it, Josh. Oh, here's some news. Maine's done with his house shit. Now he just has to move. No, I'm not done with my house shit. I've... You're, you're done with all the bullshit. Now you have to do the moving bullshit. I've... So you're done with the bullshit of worrying if you're going to get the house. Now you have to move all the bullshit to the house. I had to move the studio into the new house, which we're still recording at the old house because uh, the new house doesn't have internet. Hey, whatever. You have less house shit that has to do with paperwork and more heavy lifty thingies. Which sucks, man. I don't want to... I don't want to lift. I don't want to lift stuff. You can always get a mover. I'm also super cheap, Josh. So I'm gonna lift a lot of things. Okay, so there you go. There's that. Uh, the MMA debuts of Dylan Dennis, and uh, not the. I said debuts, but there was only one Dylan Dennis uh, debut. Yep, he only debuted Rafael once. Lovato Jr. did not debut. It was his eighth fight, and Neiman Gracie also did not debut. Anyway, they all won by submission. Bellator was heavy as fuck on those submission wins. Yeah, they all won by submission. Jiu-jitsu. Super surprising there. Yeah. Well, let's no one. Let's let's say this. Um, Dylan Dennis, after the fight, talked up his skills way more than he showed. Um, he didn't really do anything. Through a couple of strikes, ate through a few punches, pulled guard, pulled guard, and uh, eventually went around to toehold. And he was like. What are you going to do, all these people? It's like, if anybody has like a blue belt in jujitsu, they're going to stop half of what you did. And like a decent blue belt, not a fresh blue belt, a decent blue belt in jujitsu. Josh, a huge Danis fan, as you can tell. So that was news this week. Not a whole lot of other stuff happening uh, for once, which was. Well, there, there's a shitload of grappling that was watched. Yes, there is. But, but that's we not told really you about news. that last week. That's not really news. That's just par oh, for the course, Josh. Y'all ready for some news? I think we only have to watch one thing next week. We... You say like it's a chore. We have to watch. We get to watch, Josh. Well, I know we get to watch this, but we only have to watch like one thing until somebody's like, wrong, you have this, this, and this. And we're like, motherfucker. It's a whole nother week in April and partially into May. Because at the end of May, leading into June, is of course Worlds, which will be all-consuming. Yep. That'll be, it'll be fun to cover that. So we watch a lot of grappling. There's, there's your news for you. We watch a lot of grappling. We're going to tell you about it. <laughs> so UAE King of the Mats. Three divisions. We had a lightweight champion. We had a middleweight champion. We had a heavyweight champion. This was a round-robin event that they invited a bunch of former UAE champions to compete at. This, this included Grand Slam winners. Not just like previous UAE champ, World Pro champions. These were also uh, from the Grand Slam winners. I think... They didn't have enough people, and maybe, they were like, maybe it, but, we narrowed it down But too it was much. all people that d- deserved to be there, like a top-level yeah. elite grapplers. There was no yeah. one in these in the, any of these brackets that was like, really, he made it in? There was It was all top-level competition, and UAE pays, so that makes sense. So, lightweight championship. We have, man, give me these names, Josh. <laughs> really? Leo Segorio? It's been a long Leonardo week. Segorio? Leo Segorio. He uh, beat Grippo in the finals. Um, it was a really, really close match. A lot of these were really, really close. This is a lot of competition. And mind you, several of these guys then went on to compete in the World Pro mm-hmm. just a couple of days later. So they either had to they had to make weight for these things and then make weight again for the World Pro. I think this this event is awesome. And especially yes. the way they do it, where you get to see these guys compete 
continuously where it's like, all right, you know, Celso Vinicius who really, because they made the bracket so big really is not like a, like a light, a, a lightweight. I feel, you know, he's, he's probably lightweight in the sense of like the actual weight class, but not with some of these other guys. Like, you know, he's on the smaller end. Of he's on the guys. bigger end, bigger, the bigger end. Yeah. yeah. He's on the bigger end where a lot of these guys are like featherweights and light featherweights, but still it didn't matter. It made for excellent matchups. Um, these, First place is these, I said, Leonardo Leo, Segura. Second place is Grippo. Grippo and third Isaac place Paiva. is Paiva for lightweights. There are so many videos up to watch. So yeah. many little technicality, technical details to watch. Flo did a really good job for this one. It's all up. If you look at the results page, you can go through each bracket. And it's round robin, so you can click on each match for the entire bracket. There's something like, what, 10 or so? They might have missed like a match here or there. And because the lightweight bracket was the biggest bracket, there are the most videos. But still, you just go through and it's like, watch, watch, watch. A lot of this stuff happened super early in the morning. Just, yeah. Josh. And I was, either, I was either going to sleep as it came on or waking up as it was ending. So it was like going back and trying to watch all the videos again and then getting back and here's this and there's only a few matches up and they're all up now as far as I know watch them going on to the middleweight bracket this one kind of surprised me because you're like cool Galvao is in this division he's a really strong competitor uh he didn't do so well you know I was kind of surprised about that I figured he's just he but he always looks like a monster when he competes always but it was just one of those things where it wasn't his day so, middleweight champion, Charles Negramonte. Second place, Jamie Canuto. Third place, Hanato Canuto. Charles Negramonte was on it. It was, it was a great match between him and Jamie Canuto. Excuse me, my mouth is very dry. Again, all of these matches are up. I don't want to bore you with, like, here's these technical details. I'm going to run into it more because we're about to get into even more when it comes to the world pro this is just a really cool event to watch if you got to experience it live even better if you got to watch it while it was actually playing in that time frame awesome go back watch it moving on to heavyweight somebody that you haven't really seen a lot of recently in the past like couple of months not saying like he hasn't been active but (laughs) speaking of which uh, we will correct one of our many, many errors that we always drop every episode. I listen. I'm like, that's wrong. That is wrong. You two are idiots. And I'm like, oh, wait, I'm one of one of those two people. You're an idiot. Clark Gracie apparently is at the pans like every year. Yeah, I looked it up. I was like, when is the last time he had competed? And I, I went through BJJ Heroes and went, oh, yeah, 2016, 2017. No, it hasn't been three years. Apparently it was, uh, it was last year. We just like talking out of our ass a lot. It's great. We don't fact check very heavily. Well, we do, honestly, we do fact check. Occasionally. You know, for certain stuff. And we'll then- just leave it in. We're like, uh, fuck it. Nobody's calling us out yet. And then it, oh, we're going to get a flood of these. Hey, yeah. you assholes missed this on episode four. And we're going to be like, oh, God. Episode four didn't happen, Josh. Too far, too long ago. <laughs> too so, long ago. Doesn't heavyweight, exist. Heavyweight champion. The guy Josh is talking Alexander about. Alexander Trans. Alexander Trans. So we've, we've seen him around. But I like how you're talking about him. Like it's like, oh, it's just this random guy. No, it's not this random guy. It's just he has not been as active in 2018 as a lot of the other people in this bracket. If I'm not mistaken, he was Czech Matt originally, and then taught at UAE for a while, or in UAE for a while, and then went to GF team. So he was I think in he's that GF team now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's That's GF what team I mean. Now. So he he's jumped around a lot. He's gotten into like finals but then runs into somebody that beats him and he's a he's a very game competitor very big guy Uh, i'm looking forward to him competing more i hope i wonder if he has enough points to get into worlds i hope so i love watching him what do you need 50 points 50 to get into worlds Yeah. yeah only a black belt so yeah they're trying to i think they're trying to do that for Brown, or Brown, belt, I think is on maybe? is the next one on the line. I I can't I don't, remember. I don't remember. Uh, so Cyborg beat so. Cyborg. Cyborg's Abreu is in second. Roberto Abreu and Cyborg. Tanner Rice, who jumped up a division to replace someone, uh, took third. 
Tanner Rice, uh, hats off to him. That dude is, he's game. I mean, I, I caught the Alexander Trans match, and he was working very well against Trans. But again, Trans is, is a big, big dude. And yeah, he, Tanner's not like a natural heavyweight. I think he's a natural heavyweight just by size. Like, he doesn't cut, and he's got a pretty active game. I just think that he, in this heavyweight that's like up to 110 kilos, he was probably on the smaller side of the bracket. You know, he was probably the lightest guy, I want to say. He may I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised about that because most of these other guys in this bracket, um, Cyborg, Trans, Campos, Legarto, yeah. yeah those who, guys aren't like Legarto on the low ends of heavyweight. Did not look good at all during this bracket. And we'll talk more about um, him not looking the best in certain positions uh, in the World Pro. I mean, I, ugh, I can't even talk. I'm all wonked out. He was he was a small competitor, but he was game. I mean, took third. The round robin thing. Go back and watch it. It's a cool event. Moving on to World Pro. So moving on to UAE World Pro. We're going to start off talking about the bracket of death for yeah. the, uh, was it 85 kilos? 85 kilo Brazilian qualifier bracket. So a little thing about UAE is if there is more than one competitor from a country, you have to qualify in a, in a separate country bracket before they put you into the main bracket. So the Brazilian bracket is crazy for 85. Was wild. So even even when some of these guys were not representing like their Brazilian team, uh, like Caio Perez, who was representing the Armed Forces team, which if I'm not mistaken is a UAE team, uh, he's from Brazil and they lumped him in with that. So you have... Uh, Gustavo Batista, Caio Perez, Patrick Gaudio, uh, who else? Hanato Canuto. You have uh, Claudio Calazans, who's won it in previous years. So that's the other thing. If you're not active in that season, that 2017 2018 season, it doesn't count towards your point total in the current season. So anything that happened in the past, if you're not active in the current season, doesn't matter. You know, you had Felipe Pena, who was the champion for the previous two years. Yeah. I think two years, yeah. The previous two years, he he had to qualify. It's not like he was automatically seated in. He was not the number one ranked guy in that division as uh, a Brazilian. So you have to go through these qualifiers. You have to fight your way in. You have to do the tournament before the tournament. And again, this 85 kilo bracket was called the, the bracket of death. Because of all of the killers in it. Claudio Calazans, who's won it multiple times, had to qualify. Didn't even qualify. Got the trip. You know, won the, the Brazilian Grand Slam or whichever tournament he won to get the invite. Yeah, if you, if you win a, a big event or I think... If, if you win a Grand any Slam. Any Grand Slam, they give you airfare, hotel, and entry into, into this, basically. Into, into, this. The, into the World Pro. But if there's more than one competitor... You then have to qualify. And if you've been competing a lot in the Grand Slams and racking up points, that puts you at the top of the heap. So Gustavo Batista had to run through all of these people to even get into his bracket. Let's see. Uh, the American bracket for 77 kilos, Edwin Najmi and uh, Thomas Keenan, they were the only two because there was already an American in there. So... They had to have a round robin of matches. Think about that for a second. There's two of you. There's one spot. And they're not going to go, whoever wins one match gets to go in. Whoever like, wins best of three. Nah. Best of three, son. Best of three. Najmi takes the first one by submission from the back. Tight, tight, tight choke. Awesome. Do it again. All right. Now uh, shake out your arms. Take a breather. You're about to do it again. Keenan won by points on the second one. and You got to go a third time. Now. Yeah. Now it's time Enjoy. to go again. And Najmi snuck it in and qualified into the bracket. So it was really, really cool. But also it can be kind of grueling. I would say brutal. Like yeah. if you got to compete against world-class guys oh, that happen to be from your country to get into 
the event. And then if there's two of you, you got to compete three times. So everyone's having a couple matches against high-level guys before you get into the bracket versus other people from the rest of the world. Yeah, and you still haven't gotten paid yet. You still haven't won the main thing to make that cash, Thank you to for make it. that guap. I just think it's hilarious that you have to beat guys in your country. Not hilarious, like it's grueling. But you've got to beat guys from your country first to get the opportunity to beat the rest of the world to win money. Well, that's the other thing. It's like they don't want the Brazilians winning all the oh, brackets. I don't think it's they, bad. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. I just think it it is a little weird because the majority of – for you eight, the majority of your competitors are from three places. Brazil, America, and – UAE. UAE. But that's – I wouldn't say that. This is more of like a legitimate world championship type tournament. Oh, I think it is. I think because of because they have that country country thing, you're looking for a. They don't let one country take it all because they have this system. I think it makes it almost more legitimate than if you let a single country just dominate. You get okay, you have eight world champions from this one country because they all got seated on opposite sides of the bracket, and then they clear out their brackets, and then they got they have one, two, and three is all Brazilian. You make them, this is the top guy from your country, he gets to go and compete and represent your country at the world event. The other cool thing is if you want jiu-jitsu as a sport in the Olympics, this is what you would want to put forward, not IBJJF World Championships. No, I think this is a much more international way to do the event, and yes. it is a much better representation of... Um, the a world standing because then you don't just get you know the Brazilians are. I think putting, the Brazilians would still dominate. Oh, yeah, they it. definitely would dominate, but it doesn't give other opportunities to other countries a chance. I mean, quotes there. It makes it a world event as opposed to okay, you you have Brazilians on all ends of the bracket in the preliminaries. Your Brazilians are most likely going to go forward in seventy percent of those matches, and then by the end. Your, you know, your semifinal, your quarterfinal is a bunch of Brazilian guys. Is it really a world tournament at that well, point? Well, you also have to think about it this way. If you move it as like an Olympic sport, you have to have a team. So you only have like your main team and you have your backup guys if somebody gets injured. So at, each, at, at each weight class. At each weight class. So let's say there's, you know, well, that's if how we Olympic break does, it down Olympic does team trials. Right. But they do it in country. You do your country trials to determine who you're sending to the Olympic Games at X weight class. This is what judo does, what wrestling does. Right. It's what most things do. But, you know, you still have you still have to go through this grueling tournament now, and we're talking hypothetical Olympic things, where you have X amount of countries, so you have a bracket of, I don't know, 64 people, let's say. Each person is from a different country, and it slowly gets whittled down and whittled down and whittled down, and you're like eight, nine matches in at a certain yeah. point because it could be more. And but I think for, wor for world events like this, if you, want, if you want to do it in, like, in the quotes there, like world style, like country versus country world style, this is the way you have to do it. Yeah, and it's only six minutes long. Yeah, it's great. I love. I love. I love their six minute matches. I don't mind a ten minute match. That's how you can score a hundred points. I don't either. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind a ten minute match. But I think for UAE, I'm much more likely to go rewatch and and like pause and like enjoy a UAE match because I find that there's much less stalling, and I really like the stalling penalties for UAE. I find you get more action in the match, but it's it doesn't. You still get really good jujitsu. Yes. They found they the rule set they found a really good way to get good sport jujitsu in there without being super boring because certain times IBJJF matches can can drag. You get a ten minute match that drags for nine minutes and it's like oh man it's rough. UAE because of the aggressive stalling penalties and because of the shortness of the match, you you see less like I think so many fewer matches just drag because guys know they only have you know from the time they get to the ground four minutes to work no they go or you know five minutes and 55 seconds to work josh they pull guard no one no one takes down to post guard that fast have you seen a meow brother match they stood he stood this match they stood this Some one for a little it. bit yeah but that's the that's the other thing is uh with worlds there's no monetary incentive whatsoever other than like what you can make because you're like hey i am now black belt world champion pay me money because of seminars 
with this, they're like, hey, we're going to give you like $25,000. Oh, we're talking about IBJJF versus, versus UAE. UAE. Like UAE, you win you this event, paid. you get paid. Like they go, oh, you're world champion. You deserve world championship money to do that. And we're going to talk about here in a minute, you know, all the breakdowns because the UAE season has ended now. This is the 2017-2018 season. We're on to the new... It'll rotate soon into the next 2018-2019 season. Yeah, world championship season, basically. But yeah, that's I think is another incentive to actually like. But you, quote you unquote, pay your fight. guys. They pay their they pay their world champions. So meaning, so winning a world championship for a UAE, it holds some serious weight because that they they have value. It has value because you get paid, and like they've assigned it value because it's worth money. I would just yeah, if it's a prestige thing, and that's great. But it doesn't have any monetary value Not aside yet. from like perceived name value. UAE goes. Oh no! You win this; it's worth actual money. We pay you actual money to win. Well, you get to compete for free if you're a world champion. In IBJJF, <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's so, black oh, belt. Oh, you waive my two hundred dollar entry fee. Oh no, sorry. What is it? It depends on when you sign up. Okay, but you have your cards though. They don't give you a free ID card. They don't Ooh, give you registration. Yeah, they should start bargaining. So it's for like, that okay, cool. You, I, I win a world championship. I'm a world champion. I'm identified as one of the best grapplers in the world. Or at my weight class, and oh, you're so nice for giving me a free entry into this tournament again. Oh, you cool. guys are great. <laughs> UAE uh, flies you out, puts you up, feeds you. Oh, they don't feed you. They do. No, they don't. Yeah, no. I listened to a podcast with Matt Layton talking about winning um, the North American thing, and when they fly you out and they put you in a hotel, they feed you like buffet food, like oh, the whole time you're there. But okay. I was taking it as like, oh, all your meals are good. Buffet yeah, food no, is three, stuff, whatever. three meals a day, apparently. Like, I you gotta get, eat more than that, dog. You, <laughs> and this is why you miss weight, Josh. <laughs> oh man, point taken. No, but I mean, if I'm traveling and I'm and I'm, I'm good on weight, dog, I gotta eat. Especially after I'm done competing, shit, son. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna try to. I'm, I'm gonna go with a satchel. It's because you're American. No, it's because I'm hungry. <laughs> I was hungry when I was on weight. I was like, is it? Do you remember after that when I got down to that weight the first time for, for DC Open and Greg had that big bag of just white bread, peanut butter, and jelly sandwiches? By the way, Greg, um, you're a terrible human being for having creamy peanut butter, chunky peanut butter for life. I mean, I think it's a little Say something, man. Say something. I'll smack you. Chunky yeah. peanut butter. Josh will. Life. The new studio is going to have a table that's a little further away, so Josh is not within hitting distance of me. I can throw something at you. I don't give it's a okay. shit. Anyway, I took a whole bunch of Greg's uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because I'm like, I can eat this. And then I ate uh, half of uh, a one-pound Reese's peanut butter cups. Ew. I, yo, I go hard. So speaking of going hard, on to the finals for UAE, their world championships. Starting off with the men's 82 kilogram black belt final bracket. Joao Miao versus Josh. Give me this name. They said it a bunch of times. I ain't giving you shit because apparently Paulo Miao is giant now. 82 kilos. I'm gonna wait. Do you need to? Do you need to blow it up to 200 200 percent size? No. Okay. You so, got old man eyes. 62 kilos, motherfucker. Oh, that is 62. You're right. I was kind of wondering. I was like, "Wow, why is why is Joao like?" Yo, Joao's been hitting them weights and the steroids, Josh. <laughs> we kind of gloss over that, but you know, no one really cares. Hitting eating. them weights. So son. Joao defeats Eaton Iron. Why, Josh? What is his name? I'm gonna go with Wanky Che. That's what they said. It just I don't I don't because I don't think it's Wanky. I don't feel comfortable calling a guy Wanky Che like Wanky. By the way, props to North and South Korea for trying to get these peace talks together. How about that? There's some current events. Real life shit going on, not just grappling. Did you not see that? Of course I saw that, but I'm looking at you weird because like, why would you talk about that on the show? Why Why not? It says Korea. It doesn't say South Korea. It doesn't say North Korea. It says Wanky Che, Korea. It's always said Korea. They never distinguish, ever. I thought they distinguished it. Never, ever, I thought ever. they were being super progressive and being like, Korea is one nope, thing now. They've only ever listed them Korea as K-O-R, Korea. Because no one from North Korea competes in anything, Josh. That is not true. What so, about the Olympics, dog? Drama, they compete as one Korea. No, they don't. They, this year they did. No, they don't. The People's Republic of uh, the People's Democratic Republic of of Korea. Uh, it, that's North, right? I think that's yes. Okay, so that's what they compete as. They don't just compete as Korea, except for this year, which they did. 
they still competed separately, no, they didn't, didn't they? Josh, I didn't no. watch the Winter Olympics I first did, of all because I am I don't used care to winter about, sports. I, I don't so, care about Winter Olympics. But okay. Joao Miao defeats <laughs> Wanky Che from Korea, best Korea, seven all Korea. <laughs> this is a fun match. We're trying to educate people. I wouldn't go that far. And myself, apparently. <laughs> Josh, not so good at the Globe this week. <laughs> Uh, this is a fun match. Zorao actually stood longer than I thought. We got to see some of his passing. Gets the neon belly. Really deals with Wanky's lapel guards and entanglements very, very well. Great, you know, top pressure. Gets an advantage at one point and defeats Wanky Che. Seven to two. Seven to two to win. Video's up. Video's up. Watch it. Video's Keep good. It. It's just about a six minute match. And it's, uh, it's exciting. It's not about a six-minute match. It is a six-minute match. Yeah, and they, they pause. They reset them. So it's a little more than six minutes, Josh. Six-minute match, I thought about though, it before I said it. The match is six minutes. And I was count reset time and match time. Whatever. Anyway, 69 kilo men's black belt division. Paulo Miao defeated Gianni Grippo. Two to two, one add to nothing. This is a super close match. So something that I'm still confused about. I'm confused about as well. And we like paused and talked about it for the past five minutes. Why is Paulo Miao competing? So he got suspended in 2016. He got he got caught. He got flagged for a WADA doping violation during the IBJJF 2016 World Championships. He took a two year suspension, so he should be eligible to compete back in September. Of yeah, 20- the suspension went into effect in September of 2016, right? Which means he won't be able to compete in anything that's under WADA until. This year, September 2018. Which includes UAE, UAE. which is also underwater. So we looked, and I'm not, I don't know if we've missed something or if he's gotten that suspension reduced or if he's gotten, he's out of suspension time. I don't remember. Yeah. And we either talked about it or we saw an article and we talked about it about him being able to do the Grand Slams, but not the World Pro. Right. I think that was like London Grand Slam or. One of the European we, Grand Slams. We saw him, and they were like, yeah, he can do these, but he because they're, the Grand Slams aren't sanctioned by it, but the World Pro is. So this so, is really confusing as to why he's able to compete because he's suspended, supposedly. So we're confused, and uh, if, it, we're, if there's a reason, somebody please let us know. Um, but Josh and I are confused as to why he's able to compete for... Uh, for these events that are that are WADA sanctioned, when he's supposedly still under a WADA um, flat, suspension, uh, suspension. So yeah. I might have missed him getting out of suspension, or get, missed that getting reduced if it went from twenty four mm. months to eighteen months, or sixteen, or some other Whatever time frame. But he competed. I'm not going to be mad that I get to watch any oh, God compete. No. I don't care about doping violations at all. Like I could care less. I want to see you guys compete. Sort of like the whole baseball argument. Dude, like I could, yo, I want to watch home runs. Sorry, not could because I couldn't care less. I don't care what drugs my athletes are on. I want to see them perform and recover and put on the best performances that they are capable of as a human, no matter what drugs are in their system. Give me TRT Vitor. Give me TRT Dan Henderson. Give me Josh Barnett on whatever he wants to be on for no reason. I don't care, Josh. (laughs) I do not care. So Paulo Meow defeats Johnny Grippo to take the 89 kilograms men black belt final. 89. Paulo Miao's getting even beefier. He's swallowing them 69. steroids. Okay, He's this... eating them 45-pound plates, son. He ate the bar, too. God damn, he is big. The text looks like the eights are sixes. Okay. The sixes are eights. Yo, you made this like 200% larger, and you still can't read that? I'm telling you, you need to now start Photoshopping them as these giant beefy. You know how like they Photoshopped uh, Leandro Lowe to look like this enormous horse monster? He's huge. He's big, but he wasn't as big as that photo was playing him out to be. Yeah. But we need to stretch out the Meow Brothers to make them look really big now. At 237 kilos, Paulo Meow weighs in. How many sevens is on here? Or- 77. Now on to the 77 kilo. And we're going to stop the berating of me here. <laughs> 77 kilo men's black belt final was Espen Ma- Mathieson from, from Norway. Norway. N-O-R. <laughs> defeating Jake McKenzie. Can. Canada. The reverse <laughs> armbar. Zemane apparently is just like completely out of it. At least he's not going to be able to say fever dream this week. I started counting, listening to last week's episode, and then I just got angry at him complaining, and I stopped counting. Anyway. I was trying to complain this week. I'm very tired. I'm the tired. house process has been very stressful. He's, he's such a baby. Uh, he finished him. That's awesome. 
I, I am I am so very happy. Which was funny because if you listen to the uh if you listen to the commentary later in the finals when they're talking because Felipe Pena and Adam Wardzinski, spoiler, was the last match of the broadcast. They were like, there were so many submissions, and I was like, what were you watching? Because I was watching a whole bunch of wins by points and stuff like that. So it was cool to see a submission. It was cool to see Jake McKenzie in there in the finals. Kind of bummed that he lost. I love watching him compete. He's got a little different take on the deep half than most people normally do. But Espen's a beast as well. So props to him. Now ready? What 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 weight is that, Main? 85 kilogram men's black belt final. Izaki Bahentz from Brazil. Are you going to say that? Are you going to spell it out? Is he from Bra? Bra. 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 Brazil. Okay. Brazil. Well, I want you to say the next one. Facil Al Ketabi. Ketbi. Very Ketbi. good. From UAE. Uh, points victory, 2-0. to zero. Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ketbi is the adopted son of one of the sheiks. If I, I believe so. I have absolutely no idea. I'm pretty sure he is. Uh, he yeah. definitely had an easier bracket getting into this than uh, Behens did. Yo, Behens is just a monster. He's been on a tear. I think he's he's one of the top He wants dogs. all the monies. That's I what it is. I feel like he's one of the top dogs for Worlds this year. I would not be surprised if he were to take it. You know what else kind of confuses me? That what? this is like a pro event, quote unquote, a lot of these guys in the finals are under contract with ACB. Does this interfere with that at all? It's a tournament. So oh, I think, okay. I so I think they're allowed to compete in tournaments, cash prize tournaments, but not super fights. Oh. So EBI gets kind of a funny thing because it's like it's a super fight tournament. This is an open entry tournament. I think it okay. has to. I think it has to deal with is it an invitational tournament versus not because do we see anybody that's under contract for acbjj for uae king of the mats technically also a tournament but did we see any of those guys that were on king of the mats that are also signed to uae uh, acbjj currently is where Zinsky on there no he no. wasn't i thought i think I think that is a pro event. That is a invitational pro event. I think. Oh yeah, that's that. right. You're invited. That so yeah, you're invited to yes. it. So you can't. Oh. I think any. Oh, like you can do any opens. You can do any. But no. But you're technically invited to to the EBIs as well. So you can't do those. You can't oh, okay. do invitational super fight events or invitational Even super fight tournament. tournaments. You okay. can do like open entry. You had to amateur. Gain entry to this. There can be. You can get money at the end for winning it, but it has to be an amateur entry. Term. You have to compete to get into it to get the money. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is my understanding. That could be completely wrong, but that is my understanding. Oh, well, also, Gary Tonin, we talked about like three months ago, Gary Tonin uh, being with one, he can still do grappling matches. Yeah, I knew that. Okay. Well, we messaged him on Twitter, and he was kind enough to reply. Oh, okay. AKA main messaged him on Twitter, and he was kind enough to reply. Going down to the 94 kilo, that is a nine and a four. Felipe Pena from Brazil defeated Adam Wardzinski from Poland. Hey, uh, Adam Wardzinski, if you're about to sweep somebody, just come up and fucking finish it. He drove me insane. There were multiple times where I'm like, he's going to come up and sweep him. And then he would fall back down. I'm like, he's not pushing against you. Felipe is not pushing against you. Why are you falling down? Like... uh, Yo, if you're going to get swept again or you're going to stay on the bottom, like, whatever, don't, what are you doing? Get some points at least. He did some, he, he made some questionable calls to me, to my, to my eyes that I was watching. He made some questionable calls where he could have come up a couple of times and he didn't. And it was very frustrating. I don't really have a whole lot to add to this match. I kind of saw the same thing Josh did. Um, he just like I assume that I'm I assume I'm not seeing things. I assume Pena was doing more on top to stop the sweeps than I saw, and there's something I didn't see. But it kind of looked like where Dinsey would get like almost there, and like okay, he's gonna come up, he's gonna come up, and then just kind of wouldn't finish. And I didn't understand why. I didn't get it. No idea. But the 110 kilo men's black belt final, 
ladies and motherfucking gentlemen, Herbert Santos is back in the house. He back, Josh. He back. Yo. What the fuck? Like, where has this guy been? Where has this guy been the past couple of months? Because he was on a fucking tear. Was it because they were like, yo, we're going to give you a lot of money? And he was like, Psh, ready. Dude, ACBJJ, they gave him a lot of money. Like Europeans. That's, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Dude showed up, though, and this is the Earth. He won his bracket? He, went his, he won his Brazil bracket to right, make he it He went to... in, squeezed a motherfucker's face to win his bracket to qualify, then comes in and we're watching and they're talking about Herbert and how he's such a monster and he'll either do this one thing or does another thing. Hits a takedown, goes right to Lagarto's back. Right to it. So fucking fast. And I'm like, what is going on? I mean, straight up, Herbert on vacation. Herbert is on vacation wherever the fuck he is. Stay there. Because again, I enjoy making fun of him I enjoy when Herbert shows up because it's just amusing to talk about. But motherfucking Herbert Santos. Dude, he's scary fast for 110. Yo, he's just scary when he's on. We talk about it all the time. When he is on, he is frightening. When he's on, there are very few dudes in the world that can beat him. When he's not on, fucking I could beat him. Well, maybe. Uh, No. Don't lie. No. He would throw you literally onto a different mat. He might kill me. With his hands. There's a possibility that you would die. Like straight up death. I'm reaching too far. But Lagarto just got beat up mad quick. And Herbert, and I love it when people do it, he didn't try to readjust and get it under the neck. Just talking about the rear naked choke now. Just squeezed his motherfucking head. I was so excited. I was like, oh shit. This shit is happening. He's going to bottle top him, Josh. He was doing it sort of. Yeah. He wasn't he wasn't turning it all the way, but he was still squeezing and, and, and getting it sunk in. It was beautiful. Yeah, watch that watch the finals match with Herberth to see a dude be super athletic and fast and, and fucking scary. And have purposeful movement at that speed. Yeah, it was it, it was a treat. Fantastic. All right, how many kilos is this one? We're moving into the females. Forty nine ki- kilo. Chemos. Forty nine chemos. Chemo Leopold. Chemo Leopold, 49 <laughs> kilo, female brown and black. You eat is this thing where they... They combine the brown and black belts. Why? Because apparently there's not enough black belts and brown belts to have their own division. And that's what we've been seeing as of recently in tournaments. And yeah. it is upsetting. I wish there was more. But... But UAE has a bunch of brackets that just don't have females in it. So, like, do you understand their reasoning for... Yeah, I, I mean, I understand it. Combining don't, it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I get it. But it's it's a bummer that it has to happen this way. It is. My Sebastos from Brazil defeated Livia Gluchowska of Australia uh, via Poland, by the way. She's Polish, but she's now in Australia. That's they, kind of a weird way to... Is she representing Australia now? Well, that's where she lives, and that's where she's representing. But they even made mention of it on the broadcast. It's like, Livia Gluchowska from Australia. She's actually Polish. And I was like, okay, cool. So uh, she, she wins via choke from the back. Yeah, and and we see uh, Livia a, a lot. So one of, definitely one of the more active female competitors at a black belt level. So it was cool. Um, I have not heard a lot about my Sebastos, but now I will keep an eye on her. I we love, saw her somewhere, and I don't know where it was, but we've seen her before. It's probably. I mean, my brain is like you know. You remember the? Well, you might not. You're you're kind of young. The early nineties. Uh, this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. I remember that? I'm not that. I'm not that young. My my, that's my brain right now, but not on drugs on jujitsu. It's right. like this is your brain. This is your brain on jujitsu, and some person is freaking out, throwing pans and shit all over the house and smashing eggs. That's my brain right now. So under the 55 kilogram division, female brown and black belt, we have Amal Amaj Amajahed, Amjahid, Amjahid Amjahad. of Belgium. Defeating Amanda Montanero from Brazil. Montero. Again, Mon- yeah, Montero from Brazil via choke from the back. Again, like some of these people you just don't hear about because they don't go out a lot from their area or you don't see their name pop up a lot even in like the big European brackets or anything like that. 
So it's cool seeing some of these people from, you know, non-Brazilian countries, aka Brazil, non-Brazilian countries. Like, there's multiple one. Well, Japan. there's other places in the world that do jiu-jitsu. It's nice to see them. <laughs> yeah. So that's really cool. Going on to the 62 kilo women's brown black belt final, you've got Bianca Basilio who won her qualifier bracket. Uh, in a sort of round robin where she had to beat a whole bunch of other people, including her own teammate who she injured her foot. She obviously did not mean to do that. I mean, I wouldn't say obviously. Probably didn't mean to do that. I'm going to say obviously because you don't want to hurt your teammate, somebody that you train with. You don't want to hurt them and take them out, potentially ruin their chance at world championships, which is only a couple of weeks away. Like they took out Louisa Montero on a wheelchair. Not saying it was bad, but they took her out on a wheelchair. Probably not great if you're getting wheeled off. Who knows? Anyway, so wish Bianca, her a recovery. Indeed. Bianca Basilio defeated Fionn Davies from Britain. We've seen her on uh, the Polaris cards before. Yep. We've seen her in Europeans and other things. She won via referee's decision. Super close match. It was 2-2 two to two on ads. Zero point score in the match. Obviously. Because <laughs> I only mentioned the ads. 70 kilo women's division, Anna Carolina Vieira, who I found out her nickname is Baby. They call her Baby. Huh. That's a, that's a very interesting, I guess, because she's the baby sister of, you know, Big Vieira. That makes sense, actually. That's actually a much more reasonable nickname now. Uh, she defeated Jessica Swanson, 9-2-0. Jessica Swanson, USA. How about that? Yay. We had, we had... Well, no, technically we had two USA representatives, even though one wasn't from the USA, technically. Moving on to that (laughs) match, we have a 90 kilogram women's brown belt, black belt. Who's in that division? Angelica Galvao. Who is definitely not 90 kilos. No. Not even close. She was like, ah, fuck it. I'm just going to go in at the heaviest weight. She defeated Marta Zareka. I think I said that right. I did. I'm not gonna see either way. Zareka from she Poland defeats her eight to two. Yo, she was on, and she's been off for a while because she hurt, had hurt her knee. She had a knee injury. Was it knee or was it kid? No, she had a knee injury. Okay, their daughter is like eleven years old. They haven't had a child recently that I'm aware of. Hmm. I think they only have the one child. They got the one or the two. One. Okay. As far as I'm aware, I haven't really looked at them as a family. I've just looked at them as competitors. <laughs> Do you, uh, you're not even really actually married. You just happen to have the same name. That's why you thought Andre Galvao was going against AJ Agazarm the other week. Cause you just saw Galvao and immediately went with, Oh, it must be Andre. Yeah. Everyone that's named Galvao is Andre. Like, <laughs> that's how that works. You're doing jujitsu. And I see your name. It's like, Oh, Galvao, obviously Andre. So here's something that I want to nitpick about UAE, right? This is a Go big on. event. Go on. It's televised. Go on. Some of the angles that these videos are from are poopy butthole. Like yeah, I didn't get it. Straight up just nasty grossness. Like it looked like somebody was filming them with a cell phone. They have boom shots too, which I don't get. Like they have like some of these matches were straight up like one of the I can't remember which Meow it was. I think it was like the Europeans. Was, <laughs> yeah, I think it was Joao Meow versus uh Izaki Paiva. It straight up looked like a, a cell phone video and they were like this is what we're going to give you and i was like you have all these cameras have them dedicated to it i mean with worlds a lot of times when they're doing the main commentary they're on the one mat the center mat the larger mat that's fine and they had that same thing but the other mats didn't seem to have like good cameras this is a common gripe we have with ibjjf with uae with even like acbjj when they won their their streamed events there's there's just like the other mats are always garbage. Yeah, I don't I don't and I wish that if you're going to stream the mats, just put up or put a little more into the other mats because a lot of these matches, you know, you get in the semifinals or the quarterfinals like world championship caliber guys going against each other and we're getting closer to the world so guys are peaking they're at the peak of their training they're going in they're not like trying new games out they're not working there you're seeing some of the highest level jujitsu available in a competition setting and it looks like it's on a cell phone camera and it's just annoying because you you miss a lot of the little nuances because the cameras are bad and the yeah, angle is bad and the quality is bad 
just there, annoys the crap out of me that you're missing that high level jujitsu because it's being broadcast poorly. They're filming these on T-Mobile Sidekicks. That's a blast that, from the past, Josh. That that's what. Don't be mad. You wanted one of those back in the day. Everybody had Sidekicks. I had a chocolate. I don't even know what that is. That was the little LG phone. Oh, that was after the razor. Oh, okay. I never had a razor. Mm. I had the original camera phone when that first came out. It was still like a flip clam- clamshell phone, but it had the camera where you had to pull off the cover for it. You had to pull it down so you could take terrible grainy pictures, but you thought you were awesome because you could take like six pictures before your memory card filled up. Well, that and you could assign pictures to contacts so people would call you and you'd have these weird, ugly looking pictures. And that was like, the coolest thing ever. That was. And just like the same thing when like the first droid came out like the original Android phone. And you were like, Ooh, I have a smartphone that isn't an Apple phone. And then you realize how terrible it was afterwards. Oh, it was great. Anyway. So yeah, don't film matches on sidekicks because it looks really bad. That was UAE world pro for the most part. There is a ton of matches up. Just a lot of really good matches in there. Only six minutes long. Go back, watch them. Some really good jujitsu on display. Um, active matches where they call the rest of stalling penalties. Go watch it. It's fun. So I'm, I'm looking at something right now. So we're, that, we're talking about, UAE. that was UAE. We're talking about the USA world team trials for grappling. It's through USA wrestling. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, what? And then it, it dawned on me that the title of this article is five 2017 world team members win titles at the Gi grappling world team trials. That's a lot to get, you know, wrap around. And I'm like, why is it saying 2017? I'm like, oh, guys that already won it, won it again this year. Now, I tried to watch this. I legitimately was like, I'm going to watch this. This is really weird to me. It's a confusing event to my brain. You're talking about how confusing it was last week. It never popped up as saying live. Or maybe I missed it. I don't know. There's no videos up. And part of it happened on Thursday. And Friday. It's Sunday night, by the way. It's, it's about Sunday night. 11 o'clock at night on Sunday. It's actually 10, 20 and oh, yeah, 39 math. seconds. I couldn't find it. So, yeah, it's, it happened. It occurred. Um, there's no really great synopsis for results that we can even read. The article. Give it to you. There you go. This is what I'm confused about, right? So, they're, they're posting a picture and the U.S. World opened of actual wrestling happened as well. I didn't get to watch any of it. I'm going to delve into it later and might talk about it next week. But like the guy the that won his his weight class in the gi is a three stripe blue belt. So uh, I'm totally going to try to enter this next year, and I'm going to try to beat the shit out of everybody. How's your wrestling, Josh? How's my wrestling? Yeah, mediocre at best. But fuck that, I'm pulling guard. Even if I lose points, I'll sweep your ass. Maybe <laughs> confidence, Mr. Weinstock. So yeah, it happened. Um, we don't I couldn't catch it. It was, I, I don't know why it never popped up as live. Maybe I'm stupid and I missed something. I don't know, but I think there's no video up. There's nothing that I can see. The gi division happened on Thursday. No video, nothing. Can't so, find it. So that was that. Um, it's weird still. So on to events that are less weird. Fight to Win Pro 72 in Pittsburgh. To- paid out a total of $18,880 in salaries and commissions and had a 62.8% submission rate. We'll round that up to 63%. 63% submission rate, Josh. And it was headlined by Tom DeBlas versus Lou... Armazani. Armazani. So let's get into it. Kids and teens results. Kirsten Get. Defeated Lily Clark by armbar. Hassan Bazi defeated Brady Joling by armbar. That was submission of the night for the teens and kids. Gage Helbrun defeated Liam Clark by armbar. That was fight of the night for the teens and kids. On to the purple belt results. Mark Sestock defeated Ken Robson. Oh, I thought I said his name wrong. It is Ken Robson. Robison by decision. Jeff Mock defeats Trung Duong by decision. I said that wrong. I can guarantee that almost. Chris Dempsey defeated Calvin Tracy by split decision. Justin Michael defeated 
Droit, Droit, Jacob Just by Kimura. I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure either, Josh. <laughs> Je- <laughs> John Cad. Oh my God, I can't read. Cad Walder defeats Jacob Myers Prost via armbar. Shane Valco defeats Shane Rail via Sean. Gil- Sean Rail via guillotine. Colin Capri- Caprini defeats <laughs> Andy Anderson via head and arm choke. Ryan Ariola defeats Justin Bursman. Ben's via- Bensima. Bensima via decision. Christopher mm, Passarello defeated Jepta Orstein by Kimura. Josh Fremd defeated Julian Flennery by decision. Vince Meng defeated Luke Lago by heel hook. Daria said, said Lasik. Oh my God, we are. It's t- Darla, I think, Josh. Is it? Oh, yes, it is. Apparently, I can't read anymore. That is an L and not an I. She defeated Rebecca Blair by decision. Trung, did Trung pull double duty? He might have. He did pull double duty, Josh. He pulled double duty. He lost the decision, but then turns around and wins by defeating Ryan Croyle by rear naked choke. Andrew Party defeated AJ Bosley by split decision. That was fight of the night for the purple belts. Daniel, God. We are awful at human beings. Daniel Stepinski defeated Evan Anastasio by decision. Micah Metz defeats Dylan Davis by decision. Edward Bean defeats Aaron Hennen by knee bar. That was submission of the night for the Purple Belts. Michael Haskett defeats Chris Ellis by heel hook. David... Oh, God. David Gonzalez. Yes, I get to skip that middle name. Defeats Mike Ross by heel hook. And they'll do it for the purple belts. So moving on to the brown belt results. A-line Christner defeats Lauren Timko by decision. Alan Gums defeats Mark Farrell by flying armbar. That was submission of the night for the brown belts. Dave Margella defeats Mike Little by Kimura. That was fight of the night for the brown belts. Brian Gums, who I'm going to assume is Alan Gums brother why would you assume that josh maybe it's his dad or his distant cousin or grandfather because he's guys, his own grandfather just because guys have last names that are the same they got to be related see how it is yes yes according to you yes anyway he put in a bow and arrow choke that i was like eh, it's not that deep yet and tapped the guy out i was like "Ooh, dude's got sick grip because it didn't look all the way in but he got it dave england Defeats Justin Cantoric by decision. And Georgina Staley defeated Abby Passanelli by decision. On to the black belt results. Rob Hilleman defeated Nate Stevens by heel hook. Jay Wadsworth um, didn't like Jake Myclot's foot. That is, uh, that's what I'm to put that, Josh. That is how I'm going to put it. Because Myclot actually started on top and looked like he was, you know... Starting to get in his groove and go in. His momentum. He was building momentum, building momentum. I like your choice of words, man. Anyway, uh, Jay got underneath and grabbed up a foot and just started twisting. It it did not look pretty. He goes and goes and goes. I was like, ooh, that might break. And then you get the tap, and my clot was stayed on the mat and was like holding his foot. And Wadsworth was like, "You're okay, you know, being." A, a good person doing what you do after you break someone's foot in competition you're like you know are you okay obviously not because i felt it snap but like are you okay i'm gonna ask I'm, i've had two reactions to breaking someone's foot one was good you deserve that and i was a terrible person for thinking that and two was holy shit i didn't mean for that to happen are you okay um, wait, 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 wait no uh, pause the episode here what was the first one from so I was doing an absolute, Nogi absolute, and uh, reaping is legal. And I had a straight footlock, but I had the leg over. Yep. And I'm cranking it, and it's making a lot of popping noises. And I'm talking to this guy. I'm like, dog, your foot is popping. Tap. And he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm like, no, you're not. This is making a lot of popping noises. You should tap. And he's like, no, I'm good. I'm like, dude... It's going to break. I can feel it. You're, it's going to break. 
And he's like, nah, I'm good. And he started doing the hover hand, you know, like I'm thinking about I'm, tapping. I'm about to tap. Yeah. I'm like, why aren't you just tapping? It's still popping and making all these gross noises. And he just wouldn't do it. So I threw the reap in deeper and arched and cranked that. And it went click pop. And I was like, oh yeah, that's broken. And he was like, tap. And I was like, you know what? Fuck you. You deserve that. You said that in your head, right? No, I said that out loud. I don't know if he heard it a lot or not, but I, I was, I was upset because he was stupid. All right. Well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> and the second one was I just popped up and stood and broke, uh, broke the guy's guard open and his foot went in front of my face and I put on a toe hold really quick. And it sounded like when you snap uh, dry spaghetti in half. Ew, Josh. Yeah, dude. Ew. I'll have to show you the video, but I am not happy with myself that I did it. Ew. I was like, man, I feel like such a jerk because the dude was super nice. We were, you know, friendly. I saw him a year later and he was like, hey, what's up, man? I was like, hey, how you doing? He's like, you remember me? You broke my leg. I was like, oh, what a great way to reintroduce yourself. I was like, yeah, how, how'd that go? He's like, it wasn't that bad. You broke it cleanly in half. I was like, what? He goes, oh, you broke my tibia and my fibula. Or fibula. I was like, wow, I'm feeling like such a jerk right now. And he was like, no, nah, it was a clean break. And I was, you know, it healed up in six weeks and I was back on the mat. Everything's great. I was like, you were still off of jujitsu for six, we six plus weeks because I broke your leg. Yo, he took getting a broken leg better than like anyone Yo, he else. took it like a champ. He was like super friendly. If I would have saw me, I would have been like, yo, asshole. My shit was broken. Fuck you. <laughs> so oh. that's how this match went. <laughs> Moving on to the next match. Oh, man. Tom Scala defeats John Lawrence via heel hook. That was fight of the night for the black belts. Yeah, they, um, a lot of people, we started off real quick with the black belts. It was like leg lock, leg lock, leg lock. Awesome. Pittsburgh get it done. We said dudes come aggressive, and that was that was apparent on the black belt card. So Maine didn't catch the main event of this because he was out celebrating, getting a house out for dinner with his lady and his future father-in-law. Yeah, that's safe to say. Yeah, future father-in-law. And I'm like, yo, the card's over. He's like, Dog, it's not even ten o'clock yet. What do you mean the card's over? I thought it was joke. I thought it was like like a section of the card, like the brown belts or the purple belts were over. Cause it's like nine thirty. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'll come back, I'll start, I'll get home at, you know, nine forty. I'll start the black belts usually start about that time. He texts me, the card's over. I went, What? I get a wait what text. I'm like, yeah, it's done. What do you mean? I was like, Tom DeBlast is the main event. That shit's over. He goes, no. I was like, yeah, it's it's over. He's like, it's 930. Yeah, so Pittsburgh got it done real fast. Anyway, <laughs> Cameron Linehart defeated Joshua Cole by triangle. And Cameron had that triangle in. I'm like, eh, that's kind of close. I don't know if he's going to finish it. And then he finished it. I was, uh, as I'm debating this, I, again, I'm at work. I'm working. I'm closing up. I'm watching this. I'm getting ready to walk out the door. I'm like, hey, am I not? Oh, nope, he got it. And those are my favorite triangles where you question if it's going to finish, and then it finishes. I, I love triangles like that because it's it's so variable for body type. And like where his arm is, where his shoulder is, where the leg is. There's so many little nuances about triangles that it can hurt so many different ways. And there's so many things that finish a triangle for all different guys with all different body types. It's triangles are one of the most fun things to watch because you get to watch the chess match and then a guy go, yep, that's as much as I got and just tap out. Yeah, it's really awesome. So the only decision in the black belts, Tommy Costa defeated Kevin Goodwin by decision. So again, the black belts brought it hard. They were all about that. Isaac Greeley defeated John Stutzman by rear naked choke. This was another one where I was like, uh, is he going to finish? Yep, yep, he finished it. When the videos do come up, because again, uh, it wasn't a very, very long card. I really would wish that they would just upload the main chunk, the whole entire thing, all at once. So you mean people the event, Josh? Upload the event? Yes. Hey, look, sometimes I don't want to use words. So or I won't. Or when the event finishes, let me go back and rewatch it. Like replay it. Like, oh, the like event finishes. Just rewind it. Rewind it is what I'm looking for, Josh. Yes. Rewind the grappling. Rewind the grappling. Grappling rewind. Look at that. Look, I worked it in. How about that? 
Finally, main event. Tom DeBlas apparently did not want to be in Pittsburgh very long because he defeated Lou Armazani by heel hook, which was... Fight of the night. Submission of the night for the black belts in about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Like, he came in, he, he pulled, he got underneath, brought the leg across, started fishing for it, got it, finished it. The commentary team was talking about how Lou Armazani was like one of the first guys in the Pittsburgh area that was really like into leg locks. And then he got finished. Like he didn't even get to finish his story about how he was into leg locks before he got finished with a heel hook. You're against the blast though. Like the blast with the DDS guys, like tone in Donaher. Like, okay. How, how did the blast do at ADCC? Yo, he drew Orlando Sanchez. What do you expect? Attack them legs. Yo, Orlando Sanchez was like 800 pounds for that match. He laid on Tom DeBlast. At one point, Tom DeBlast threw his hands up in the turtle and just went, I don't know what to do. Orlando Sanchez is laying on me. Still, I'm saying, like, he doesn't submit everybody with the leg locks. I mean, he gets into that he was half, a half guard. guard player for, what, a decade? He, he's always been a half guard player. It's like. Gordon was he, talking about, like, yeah, we're trying to make him less of a half guard player and more of a, uh, a leg lock guy. So there, there's his leg locks. I mean, I mean, he, he's obviously got them. Like, he looked. Dude, you. They went back and you submitted won- a black belt in thirty seconds. Like, damn. I mean, levels to this game allegedly. <laughs> they they brought up the New Jersey card, the last one that he was on. And they were like, "Look, he pulled Donkey Guard versus Rico Rodriguez." It's like, okay, thank you for bringing that match back up. That was it was very you were on that awkward. card. I was on that card. Yeah. I was very fat on that card. You were super fat, super fat and disgusting. You make me look on you you. Looking at that picture makes me uncomfortable. Just to look at like how fat you were in oh, contrast the, the, to now. The, the, the poster for it? Yeah. Or the other picture that I sent you Both. of me in a dress shirt. Oh, that's even worse. Like <laughs> that is like it's a dress shirt picture, so it doesn't look bad. Josh sent me a picture of him when he was at his fattest. Uh what are you at? Two hundred and eighty six pounds. Six pounds in that picture. And it I, I texted him back, he goes, It looks like you ate another you. Yeah. That's the best way to explain it. But Josh and I aren't that nice to each other in text messages because literally about once a week, or I mean, about once every two weeks, I will get a text from Josh that literally says, wake up, you piece of shit. And I got that text this week. So, you know, I feel less bad about critiquing Josh over his weight loss. Yo, it's nine o'clock in the morning. You're, uh, you're over, you're out of college, right? I am out of college. You should be awake. I mean, you should end a fucking story. Like I don't have kids, Josh. I, I don't care. You should be awake. It's like nine fucking something in the morning. I'm trying to. So again, we communicate back and forth. We'll talk to each other before we post something to where we respond to emails or anything like that. We'll go back and be like, does this look good? Should we post this? Is this this? Does this make us and seem like it's idiots? Okay. Sometimes it's like, don't post that. Right. So there are things that have not been posted because we've discussed. Maybe that doesn't make that doesn't show us in the best light. Because you hear us on the mic. So just. Just translate that over to yeah to our posting history. Translate that over to what you don't hear. Think about that for a second. So I'm trying to I'm I'm doing something. I'm watching this Herbert match. I saw it. Herbert beat the shit out of Lagardo. I was like, holy fuck! And I'm like, I gotta make this. I gotta do this. And you know, it's Herbert screaming. If you're on, you know, caught our Instagram post at Grappling Rewind, you saw it's a picture of Herbert fucking yelling ah i just won and underneath of it really quick i wrote you know he's back because he was he he was back and under that picture he sent me he uh he texted me wake up you piece of shit i had to i had to message somebody else i'm like i have to share this with somebody because Maine is a piece of shit and he's not awake i got home at like 2 a.m the night before i don't give a fuck that's seven i bought it seven hours worth of sleep I bought a house the day before that. I was a sleepy Josh. I don't care. I don't care. Wake up. Wake the fuck up. Anyway. So that will do it for our coverage of Fight to Win Pro 73 in 72. 72. Somebody's getting a little ahead in of himself. Pittsburgh. Now on to our previews of Fight to Win Pro 73 in Chi-Town, Chicago, Illinois. So this card is main evented by 170-pound black belt gi match Mark Vives versus Bill the Grill Cooper. This going to be Awesome. It's going to be a good match. We saw Bill Cooper what, a couple weeks ago versus Wagner. Miami. Yep. And then we saw Mark Vives not too, too long ago. 
It was for the, uh, was it for, it was for a master's title, right? We were talking about that. I think so. I think it was Maybe. for one of the master's was it versus titles. Barrett Yoshida? No, 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 no. Because Barrett's smaller than yeah, him. Yeah. It was a different match. Okay. But either way, awesome Good matchup, seeing him. Fun matchup. Yes. Looking forward to that next match. 240 pound black belt gi match. Jamil. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to listen to this one. Fakori? Fakahowry. <laughs> that versus was way Simon, wrong. Versus Simon Park. And under that, we have a 220-pound black belt gi match. Tommy Woodruff versus Adam Red... Oh man, give Redzevic. Me Redzevic from Redzevic Jiu-Jitsu. Then the match this one, that this you've one. all been waiting for. And a 205-pound black belt no gi match. Shoney Carter versus for the versus Seth Daniels. I, I specifically said, and it's I don't think it was in the interview... Was it in the interview? It might have been in the interview, might not have been in the interview. That again, sorry we're taking so goddamn long. We're we're busy and we're slow. The and interviews we're are going up this week. There's there's one Night Pigeons is about to come out. Uh by the way, shout out to him because he uh loves uh, he commented on our Facebook page is like I love all the wrestling banter and um if you want to hear more wrestling banter or you want another uh show something off the side where i make main watch wrestling please let us know because he hates it and i love referencing it and he probably wants to edit it all out dude i hate pro wrestling yo 50 man royal rumble in saudi arabia that just happened is that a real thing it just happened friday whatever so onto this match john cena versus triple h hasn't happened in like eight years triple that h happened is dead huh triple h isn't dead <laughs> No. All right. So Shoney Carter versus Seth Daniels. I wanted him to wear, uh, see, I got off track, but yeah. I wanted, I was like, bro, wear the fucking Speedo with the giant cup. He's like, no. I was like, oh, you have to. And he was like, this is he, when Josh was talking to Seth in the, at the Maryland card. And he was, he was trying to convince Seth to come out in the giant golden Speedo with the giant cup. That would be awesome. And he's hoping that Shoney comes out in the whole pimp regalia, which I hope he does. And then I hope he wears the shorts with the giant cup. And it would just be Shoney Carter with the giant cup and the shorts. When's the last time I've seen Shoney compete? It's been a while. I like that video where he's refing and both of those guys knock each other out at the same time. And he just goes, Woo, makes the face and looks at both of them like, what do I do? Yeah. So that'll be a, that'll be a fun match. Moving Underneath on. that, Matt Leighton versus Tex Johnson. Yo, this match is going to be wild tex is super aggressive and heavy on the pressure matt as we talked about the other week from subspectrum yep good ass guard yeah and matt Layden, uh he just i listened to an interview with him not an interview like a long form podcast uh grapplers union podcast he was on that talking about uae talking about the competition spectrum talking about his first year at black belt really good episode of the show really interesting to hear him talk about you know coming up and and uh, what he's currently doing and how kind of the inner workings of the top level grapplers work and how some of the seating works and how some of the politics behind it works. Really interesting interview. If you're interested in sport, high level sports jujitsu, listen to that interview on the grappling on uh, the grappling grappling Union Union. podcast. It was real. It was a real fun interview. And I'm looking over this card and we haven't scrolled all the way down, but what I'm seeing is every single one of these black belt matches is in the gi. Go down a little bit more, man. Key, 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 key. No gi. Oh, you guys, you screwed me all up. Anyway. So Seth Daniels is a no gi match, though. Seth Daniels and uh, match that we'll get into in just a second is no gi. But most of it's gi. I love gi matches. Anyway, 195, black belt gi match. Elvik Kasik versus Dan Hornbuckle. Another 195-pound black belt gi match. Ashur Dremo versus Adam Mazlock. 185 pound black belt gi match antoine evans versus jeff seraphin another 185 pound black belt gi match mike sim versus jonas jonatus novice another 185 pound black belt gi match match Blech. alexander chu kung versus ryan courtney 180 pound black belt gi match robert hemrich hemorrhage hemorrhage i'm gonna go with hemorrhage hemorrhage, hemorrhage. we've seen it before I'm, you know how bad I am at names. You know how bad you are at names. I'm as worse. Well. That's why you read the names into the show, Josh. <laughs> Let's be serious about this. Like I know how bad I am. I know how bad you are, and you are much better than I am. Anyway, he's versus turn, Tony Williams, 180 pound black belt gi match. TK 
Oates. Maybe that's TJ. And somebody just mistyped that by accident. TK Oates. TK Oates. Versus, versus Christopher. McCarsky. Yeah, McCarsky. Here's the other Nogi match. 170 pounds. Wilfredo Acasio versus Steve Kinnison. 160 pound black belt gi match. Danilo Lopez versus Leonardo Arujo. 160 pound black belt gi match. Alexander Ra- oh. Rahasic? Rahasic? Let's go with that. Rahasic. Okay. Versus Alexandre Molinaro. 125 pound black belt gi match. Kristen Mickelson versus Samantha Fallhaber. Fallhaber. And that does it for the black belts. Again, there's a lot of black belt matches on this card. Awesome. Looks like the t- especially the top of the card is outstanding matchups. Should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this event. Seth, please wear a speedo. They talk about Chicago being their best their best crowd, so I assume that this event is going to be outstanding to I'll watch. Put it, I'll put it this way. I know Fight to Win occasionally listens to this. I know some of their other people listen to this. Uh, I partially know that because they started releasing submission percentage rate and they didn't really do that. And I'm going to take, we're going to take credit for that, even though maybe we, we didn't actually do that and they just started posting it. Seth, if you come out in a speedo and a giant cup, when you guys come back to Maryland, I will walk out to sweet transvestite from Rocky horror picture show dressed up as Dr. Frankenfurter, like full regalia in that weird outfit that Tim Curry wears. I will wear that outfit. I will walk out to that. That is a promise. I will do a little dance. I will have high heels on. Bet. Do it. So that wraps up Chicago's card for Fight to Win Pro 73. Um, Something that you know, it's posted up and something that might get you to compete more. Uh, it Now that I see this, it makes me want to compete more. Uh, is Abu Dhabi UAE released their rankings, like their best uh, competitor of the year, according to points. How many points you got? Who had the most points, basically? Who competed and won the most for UAE from the 2017-2018 season? Because they just had World Pro. That means the 2017-2018 season is over. They are now giving money out to their top athletes, the ones, the athletes in Black Belt that have accrued the most points during that season. Number one is Igor Z- Silva at 2,280 points. He gets $25,000 for being the top Black Belt in UAE by points. I ain't mad at that. Adam Wardzinski comes in at number two with 1,940 points, cashing in on 10 grand. Rounding out the top three is Jose Carlos Lima from Brazil with 1,660 points, pocketed in five grand. Now, also, each person from a specific region, uh, their their global rankings, uh, you pocket another five grand for the top ranked athlete in each area. So from the African region, Adolfo Correa with 380 points, pockets five grand. Uh, from the Asian region, João Carlos Caroca with 840 points. The European region was taken by Adam Wardzinski. So in total, he got 15,000. Yep. From just being the number two ranked and being the number one ranked in Europe. In Europe. In the North American Central America region, Matt Layton, who we were just talking about, gets five grand with 680 points. The Oceania region, Lachlan Giles with 540 points. And the South American region, the number one ranked guy, Igor Silva, pockets another. So he's now up at $30,000. So now we go to the best female by points. Uh, Larissa Pies, 1,920 points. She gets 10 grand. This is the kind of stuff that kind of pisses me off. I, I understand there's less competition, but, yo, pay them. Yeah, they just they get paid uh, 15 grand less than their male counterparts. Uh, it's Misa Bastos takes second place with 1,340 points. She gets $5,000. And Tamara Silva, with 1,300 points, gets $3,000. Uh, there was also 
uh, awards for uh, the rookies of the year, best rookie brown belts, essentially. Uh, Mateus Felipe da Silva Xavier from Brazil with 2,700 points. Banks a cool 10 grand. Awesome for a brown belt. Gabriel Souza from Brazil with 1,890 points takes away five grand. And Adrian Kozik from Poland with 1,430 points gets three grand. So you also had Masters getting extra money. Marcio Antunes from Brazil, 1,880 points, 10 grand. Tiago Marquez, Brazil, 1,740 points, five grand. And Claudio Cardoso from Brazil, 1,520 points, three grand. Grant. Then on to the best international academy. We have GF team with 66,543 points, banking 10 grand for GF team. Checkmat. Checkmat. Yeah, checkmat. 54,894 points, 5 grand. And Alliance with 46,871 points, 2 grand. So again, it's more incentive to compete. You get more money. You get to go to a cool banquet dinner. You got to dress fancy. I. What happens if you don't know you're that you're supposed to be there, and you, you don't know. bring nice clothes? You know. The one thing I like about UAE is is they seem to make it. It feels prestigious. I don't own a suit. What? I don't own a Yo, suit. How old are you? Thirty two. Man. Don't do man me. Shopping. I I have I have a reason. I'm not fat anymore. Do All my a, suits. Do you have a fat suit? Are for fat people. So you have a fat suit? No, I threw those away. They weren't very expensive or nice suits to begin Man, with. You're committed to this weight loss, Josh. I threw away a lot of my fat people clothes too. Good. So Good. I, I do mean, not want to see you up I'll, over like two ten again. I'll, I'll put it to you this way: when I was a big old fatty fat, and this isn't any offense to like people that are heavy, whatever. I personally just shouldn't have been that fucking heavy at all, at all. So you know, next size. What's your next size in in like your dress shirt? Do you know? Like roughly? I uh, used to. I th- no, oh. I don't forget what it is. I think it's 17 inches. I don't think so. I'm calling malarkey on that already. It's I'm saying it's... 19 and a half inches, Josh. I got a 22 inch neck. That's a goddamn lie. I bench 480 pounds. I'm pretty sure my five-year-old could wrap her hands around your neck. I'm a small man, Josh. Yeah, I'm looking at like 13, maybe 14 inch neck. You do not have a very big neck. I think I got a 15 and a half inch neck, honestly. Anyway, when I was at my fattest... I had a 19 and a half inch neck. So if you think about that, all you guys that are actually like large dudes that are, you know, like six foot five and your body weight and size fits and you're like, oh, here's this. I have a a 19 inch neck and then my sleeves fit. Well, yeah, I had to get all of my sleeves taken in severely because um, I look like a child wearing his dad's dress shirt just with a giant neck. Now, fortunately, mine's more around like 16 and a half, 17, something like that. That's a reasonable neck size. Sort of. So, and also my pants were fucking enormous too. God. I put a pair of pants on. I was like, yo, I can almost get another one of me in these other pants. Josh, like I said, that picture you sent me looks like you ate another one of you. Those pants were like it's struggling. A, it's a double Josh is what it looks like. And that blue shirt, like no joke, you can't see it. I popped the bottom two buttons and I tucked that shit in so you can see it. That shit's depressing. We got to talk about a later episode when grappling dies down a little bit and we have a, a day off. Exactly what the catalyst was for you to go, man, I got to stop, uh, stop getting I'll up. tell you that right now. When you can't walk up a flight of stairs without being tired, it's time to lose weight. My friend asked me that. He was like, because I hadn't seen him in a while and he just started his own little company doing detailing for cars and stuff. He was like, bro, you look great. I was like, thank you. I appreciate that because I definitely looked like a giant pile of shit before. And he was like, what was what was it to get you away from being that big? I was like, uh, getting tired of walking up steps. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, yo, if I walked up a flight of steps, I was out of breath. And then he goes, but you did jujitsu. I was like, yo, jujitsu cardio and regular cardio, two separate things. Yeah, they are. Just like striking cardio and jujitsu cardio. Two separate things. Two separate things. So that'll do it for this week's episode. Hey, it wasn't 17 hours of recording. We, uh, I might get home at a reasonable hour. That, that's nice. My wife will appreciate that. We are in the new studio next week, hopefully. New studio, and none of the soundproofing will be up, but I'm still going to yell like an idiot. Oh, it'll be up. I'm taking off four days from work this next week. Yeah. It'll be up. 
Oh, I'm hoping it's not because I'm going to try to make as many noises as possible. Josh, you already do that. I'm going to try to fart, burp, scream. I might pee in the corner of your house and try to make it as loud as possible. Like, I'm going to go wild. So that'll do it for this week's episode. (laughs) We'll see you on the mats. So, uh, as per usual, we forgot about ACBJJ for some reason. We forgot it talking about it during the entire podcast. And Maine's like, yeah, we fucking finished it up. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go fucking home. It's going to be great. And I said, we didn't miss anything. And then I said, I said, we only have one event to cover. We only have to do fight to win. How great. He goes, no, we only have one event that we know of, which is fight to win. And he goes, we're going to miss something. It's something. It's either this or ACBJJ. And I went, ACBJJ is this week. And he goes, is it? And I was like, "Uh uh-huh. And he goes, let's record it. So it's actually in the podcast as a preview beforehand. Suck it for once so again amazing card top to bottom this card starts off with nicholas welker versus bruno frazada frazado you do that every every time time. i want to be frank frazado that's what i want to be (laughs) the artist every time man that's what i want it's a 65 kilo match yo that's gonna be awesome i'm a i'm a claim bruno first i'm gonna claim it you think so i'm gonna say bruno wins it anyway Moving on to a 60 kilo match, not an 80 kilo match, as Maine probably wants to say. Yo, the font's better. I can read it 60 oh, okay. this time. Jao Pedro Somalia versus Ari Farias. Uh, I'm going to make predictions, and I'm going to keep making predictions. Ari Farias takes that one. Why? Because he is a legit motherfucker. <laughs> Josh, I'm just going to agree with you on these predictions. I mean, the dude got gypped out of a world championship. Do you remember that World Championships where he won and he celebrated and he stepped past that line? So they, fucking de- they gave him a, a negative point and that gave the other guy the World Championship? Damn. Yeah. I'd be pissed too. The, the dude that really took second knew he didn't win. He was like, yeah, you saw it on the podium. He was like, I don't deserve this shit. Anyway, moving on. 75 kilo match. Victor Silviero versus Michael Lange. Michael Lange takes it one. Yeah. Obviously, he takes yes. that one. Uh, 65 kilo, Gabriel uh, Marangoni versus Oswaldo Moisinho. Marangoni. <laughs> I think Oswaldo takes this one. Yeah, I think that is a safe bet. Next match is Isaac Dodolin versus Augusto Mendez, a 65 kilogram match. This one is harder to. It's a close matchup. Isaac's been looking good, though. So I'm going to go with Isaac on that one. I know Augusto is like Tanquino is a serious competitor, yeah. but still, I think we did. Didn't we just see Dodolin uh, win a mate, win something big? I forget what he saw. He won his last ACB match. Okay. ACB and he, looked, match. he looked good doing it. And Augusto lost. Okay, that's what I'm so. thinking. Of then. Yeah, I think I think Dodolin takes this one. We have Igor Silva versus Jackson Souza, a 95 kilogram match. Hmm. We just saw Jackson's Jackson been on kind of the like Mariana like, Open yeah. this last week versus. Um, Versus several people. Versus several people. And uh, he went at it with Muhammad Ali. That's the match I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But Felipe Pena murked him. Yeah. What do you think? You think you think Silva or you think Sosa? Silva's a game competitor. And so is Sosa. This, is, this one might be a wash just because of the round setup. I think it'll I think go to not going to have enough time to get each other decisions. down. We saw Jackson stand for a huge portion of the Marianas match um, with Ali last time. I think... That this one might be kind of a match. We'll see. This one, that one's a toss. I can't really call that one. I'm going with Silva. Okay. You're going with Silva? I'll go with Souza. Cool. We'll go with that one. Next match is Rodrigo Corporal versus Edwin Najmi, a 75 kilogram match. Um, I'm going to take I'm, Najmi. I, I'm, I was going to go with Najmi to begin with. Corporal is a very tough competitor. Najmi is just continuously competing. Um, I just don't want him to be a sore loser he doesn't he doesn't outwardly from what i can see visually he does not lose gracefully especially when it comes to if he doesn't finish man it's not the highest level i don't have i don't care about that this is where you and i kind of if you have different views i like a little bit a little bit of sportsmanship in it i I do as well but when when a guy loses a close match and he's like ups, visually upset about it, I don't really care. I understand that because I want to see these guys fight tooth and nail to the end and like and like want to win the championship and be bothered. When and they I don't. get I get that I get that, but still, 
You look no, a little more professional. I'll, I'll put it to family. you this way. Like, you know, my kid plays lacrosse and they had a game and they were going and, you know, they were like doing your little thing. They're little kids. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Blue. Good job. All that other stuff. One of the dad walks over to me. Guy I've not talked to more than like 15 seconds. He's like, sportsmanship, right? And he pat me on the back. I was like, what What the fuck was that? Like, are you mad that they have to like touch sticks and and say good game? Like, they're, they're seven, eight, nine years old, depending on, you know, who's in this thing. And you're mad because they're not like really keeping track of the score 100%. They're more so teaching these kids the game. Sorry that they want them to, you know, be respectful. It's, I don't know. I just have a weird thing with like sportsmanship. You might hate somebody personally as long as you're like, yo, good match. I'm cool with that. I can see that. I digress. Ricardo Evangelista versus Luis Ponza at a 95 kilo match. 95 kilo and above match. Oh, 95 plus kilos. Got a little plus in there, Josh. Oh, see, I didn't wear my reading glasses today. You, 25 episodes in, you haven't brought them once. That's true. You should do that. I'll wear, I'll wear them next week just for you. You'll forget. I will. Who do you think? Panza by Foot Lock. You think so? Pan's got the mean footlocks. He does. All right, next match. I love mm. love these dudes. Yuri Samoes versus Keenan Cornelius. 95 kilogram match. Keenan, all the way. Team Cornelius, Josh. Team Gee Wizard? Team Gee Wizard. <laughs> that sounds like a weird like sexual thing. Gee Wi- Josh, is it not? Uh, it might In be. Voluntary yoga? Pajama <laughs> wrestling? <laughs> Keenan's the champion, man. I think that he's not taking for ACBJJ, but... Uh, this is leading up to him getting a title fight at that number one, number two, because I think isn't Felipe Pena the ninety-five kilo champion? Maybe. Yeah, I think he is. I think he is, and I think that would be an awesome match. Oh yeah. But this is also leading up towards Worlds. I think Keenan's on. I think I. This is going to be a good match. I think Keenan takes it. Been wrong before. Been wrong many times before. But uh, we I haven't seen a it. whole lot of. Gi competition from Yuri recently that I'm aware of. No, he's been doing much more no gi recently. Here's another one 95 plus kilos. Cyborg Abreu and hopefully Herber Santos. He's coming off he's coming off a great weekend of competition. Keep that train going because these two can make an amazing match. Oh yeah, this could be one of the matches of the year. Like this, I could this, see could, this could be, be a heavyweight match of the year. A wild, fucking match. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I who do you pick? Hey, so here's the thing. I'm not picking this one. I'm not even saying maybe it's this person. Maybe it's this person. I am going to fucking watch it, and I'm going to enjoy every second of the wildness. Unless Herbert shows up. Unless Herbert is done with vacation and he shows up. Herber, I think Herbert should take this one. Here's how here's Cyborg what we should. looked in the past couple of weeks. Herberth should take this. Herber shows up. If Herberth doesn't show up in fine prime form, and we got any hint of Herberth, Cyborg's gonna gonna take it. Okay, here's one. Will Robert Drysdale call him Herbert? Yes, hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Robert okay. Drysdale will call him Herbert at least one time in the broadcast, maybe once per round. <laughs> Next match at 85 kilos. This one's going to be awesome too. AJ Souza versus Hamalo Bahal. It's hard to bet against Hamalo. It really is. But I love AJ's game. I love his aggression. So it's a safe bet to go with Hamalo, but I want to pull for AJ. Yeah, Hamalo is definitely the easier easier guy to pick. It's the safer pick. It's definitely the safer pick. But yeah, I think what you said, I agree with what you said. But AJ, he has a fun game. But I just think, I just think Homolo's just a little step above him. So I think he takes it. Now on to a the 90, match. A ninety-five plus kilo Nogi super fight. People have been talking about it. You've been waiting for it. Vinny Magales versus Gordon Ryan. Gordon Ryan's first match for ACBJJ. It is a Nogi match, so it's not in the gi like we were initially wondering about what do you think josh <sighs> Vinny has not looked great in the gi recently right he's had some boring matches in the gi he's had some boring matches 
in general. He is primarily, he does a lot more nogi. Yeah. He's a tough competitor with nogi. He is. Gordon Ryan is still the, the 99 kilo ADCC champ. He is. He still trains nogi. He does. It's safe. And he's he's been on a tear come nogi. If you it's don't safe to Gor- say if Gordon you, Ryan is going to win this if match. If you don't pick Gordon Ryan, you're an idiot in this match. Vinny what is, happens if Vinny upsets the entire Vinny fucking BJJ universe? clearly the underdog in this match. Get butt. Magalhaes Get butt. has the skills. He has the skills to do it. Don't forget that. People kind of forget because Vinny hasn't looked great in his last couple matches. Like how good Vinny Magalhaes is. But you're dumb if you don't pick Gordon Ryan in this match. Well, I wasn't going to pick against him, but you know, you never know. So that's wilder shit has happened. I predict Ryan by footlock. By heel hook? By heel hook, probably. Which round? One, two, or three? Because he's only got five minutes apiece. First or second? First or second. Yeah. Mm. I th- for some reason, I have a feeling this is going to look a lot like the Cyborg match from ADCC. Hmm. I don't know why I think that. I just have a feeling that he's just going to get a step ahead of, of Vinny and just grab a heel hook and finish it. And it's going to look kind of like it's going to look kind of like Vinny's a step behind in this match. Okay. I don't know why I think that, but okay. given how Vinny's looked recently, given how Gordon's looked recently, that's where I think it's going to go. Okay, we shall see. Moving on to the 85 kilo title fight. Leandro Lowe versus Gabriel Argis. Five what rounds, five minutes. What do you think? Lowe should take it. They've had some close matches, though. They have had some close matches, but I just think... With how good Lowe has looked recently? Lowe in the gi is hard to beat. Yeah. Unless you are much, much bigger than him. When Gabriel's not. No. No, he's not. So Unless your name is Bushesha. Mm-hmm. Or you happen to be Nicholas Mergali. And even then, that was close. And that was the t- one time that he beat him. Leandro Lowe is very hard to beat. Yeah. I, it just, that's what I think it's it's a, it's a low match. It's like Argus has the skills to be. And again, all these matches in the card, the other grappler has the skills to beat the guy we picked against. But I think low. I just think he's hard to beat. He's, he's so hard to beat. It's hard to beat, especially in this format where he gets a reset and he gets to like he gets to start on top again, basically, if he wants to. And then it'll be very interesting. Uh, it's again, the safer bet to go with is Leandro Lowe, but you can never count Gabriel Argus out and Gabriel, you never, he could just throw up a triangle. And, just and ACBJJ has kind of interesting rules. Has they can't pull guard in the first minute. Can't pull guard in the first minute and the round system. Like it, it, then you see some matchups in ACBJJ that kind of don't look like you think they should look because you guys go back to their corner. They talk to their corner. They get that minute break. They get that basically reset every five minutes. So. You know who I'm upset that is not on this card? Who? Well, there's two. Uh, one, Hudson Mateus. We've okay. been seeing him a lot on ACBJJ. Yeah. He's been finishing a lot of people in the first round. Let me guess the other one is. What's the other one? Musumeci. Yeah. Uh, there was talk of, of the title match between him and Meow happening on this card. And... Now it's not happening. Yeah, he's not listed. He's not on it. So, I'm, I'm, I don't know. There, we had talked about it before. We had mentioned it. They think they'll definitely make it. Uh, it's gonna about, happen. They've been, they've they been bracketing them together. They've been bracketing Musumeci in a way to get him basically ranked up in the ACBJJ. He's only had one, one match. Just he had one? that. He had that one match, we and he won by foot lock. Seconds. Yeah. He said two. Off of De La Hiva. What other matches he had? Who am I thinking of then? I have no idea. Okay, then I'm wrong. I was thinking of someone that they were trying to get into that match. I thought it was I thought it was Mikey, but it may maybe I'm thinking of someone else. I don't know, but they I were get saying the Zhao's confused, Josh. You get the Meows confused? Yeah. Not the Zhao's. I got the get the Meows confused, man. They look the same, different weight classes, twins. Confusing. <laughs> so on the guys I don't confused about. 95 Marcus, plus kilo title Mar- match. Marcus Ameda Buchecha versus Zhao Gabriel Rocha. Hosha. 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 Gabriel Hosha. We see the guys compete against each other occasionally. 
Yeah, it happens quite frequently. Um, in the finals or semifinals. Zhao, Zhao Gabriel um, has had some uneventful matches recently. And Bushesha is Bushesha. Bushesha takes this one. I think he submits him in round three out of the round five. You really think it's going to take him three rounds? I think he. I think it's going to take him three rounds, and he's going to submit Shao Gabriel. Gabriel's a big guy, and so is Bushesha. I, yeah, I, I just. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm agreeing for the third round. I just think you know we're not going to see like a flash sub in the first or second round. I the feel other like... thing is Shao Gabriel is not a fast starter, and Bushesha no. will come at you hard, and he doesn't have to go ten minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes. It's five, five minutes. Go. So he has that burst go. of speed where he gets to basically. I think. Yeah. I think Bushesha's a guy that. Would pro- does probably really well in this rule set long term because he gets that like he's a fast starter and he gets that minute break every round. Round three submission, Bushesha. I think it goes to decision. Okay, we'll see. ACBJJ coming this Saturday, May 5th. West Coast, my long birthday, Josh. Beach. I get to watch ACBJJ on my birthday. You you also get to watch Fight to Win Pro on my birthday. On your birthday, it's a good day, Josh. It's a pretty good day. Sounds pretty good. This is also the first ACBJJ event they've had in America. I believe so. Yes. It's exciting. You know, Very. From Almighty Kazakhstan to Long Beach. Hey. Which is a little weird. Globe trotting. They all awesome. over the place. So this is exciting. And uh, look out for this. Hopefully, at this point, we have not missed any other events. We will. Somebody else is going to tell us, and we're going to be like, "Well, there we go again, missing shit." So this now does it for the Grappling Grand Podcast. I've been Maine. I'm occasionally Josh. See you on the mats. As always, you can email us at thegrapplingrewind at gmail.com. You can check us out on Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, and pretty much anywhere you can find Facebook podcasts. We're on Facebook, Grappling Rewind. Instagram. Grappling Rewind. Twitter. Grappling Rewind. Reach out to us on social media. If you got something that you want us to cover, you want to clarify, you know, we are here. You want to tell us we're idiots. Hey, let us know. You want us to pronounce your name correctly? Let us know. Subscribe. Subscribe on the YouTube page. Leave us a review. Helps us out a lot. It helps us out. And, you know, it eventually will help you out. We like to give back. We're doing this as something that isn't done. So help us help you. Again, as always, I'm Josh. I'm Maine. And this is the Grappling Rewind Podcast. We'll see you on the mats.